the earth are we live going yes. there we're getting there okay welcome welcome everyone to can we chat here my name is sheila abram and i am pleased to be one of the coast uh, host of the <laughs> chat here. <laughs> I'm joined by my beautiful co-host. Maxine Jones from <laughs> New York. And I have to get it right because last week I went like this, so I think it's this way. <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, yeah. welcome to Can We Chat Here? And each week it's about our dreams, our goals, our stories, and our journeys. And each week, you know, our goal is to bring value with, with the topics that we share each and every week. And tonight's topic, well, we will be chatting about management and leadership. And, you know, Maxine, one of the reasons I'm just actually going on my, uh, starting my Facebook right now, I'm going to turn the yeah. volume down before I get feedback on there. Okay. So I can kind of monitor the chat. Mm -hmm. You know? Okay. One of the reasons why we decided to tackle the topic of management and leadership, there's a misconception to a lot of new business owners in network marketing where that topic is concerned. And there he is. We, we're bringing in the expert, you yes. know. We had the privilege of Maxine and I, we both started rereading, especially Absolutely. chapter nine. We read, nine. Yep, mm -hmm. we read that first. Yep. That talks about management. So mm -hmm. if you have not received your book, Enemies of Your Success by Ty and Valerie Best, even though I think Ty's name's only on here, yeah. you want to get a copy of this because yes. they tackle so many subjects that new uh, leaders or new team members in network marketing, we tend to fall into this trap, you know, and without a roadmap and without uh, a mentors like Ty and Valerie Best, I would be one who would fall into that trap. Because, so I, yeah, because as you all know, I'm from the corporate end. I'm used to management, be good management, mm. being the pillar of running a good business. But I'm in a whole different arena. I need to transition definitely. And I learned not management mode. And Maxine, you've been in a network marketing environment. Absolutely. I've been in network marketing, but not building wow. and, managing, and actually leading a team, not managing a team. Yeah. And it's a whole different ballgame with that. So I also, like you, I need to learn the structure of being an excellent leader to lead people, not to manage people. Yeah. Maxine was actually one of the top earners in, in, in the business she was in. So she brings to this arena a, a, an ability to sell some products. I mean, she makes me want to wear some makeup <laughs> without mentioning the company. But I feel like I need to put a little makeup on here. <laughs> That's a well of weeks yeah. with makeup. Yeah, it's but Ty does. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell you all a secret. We talked to him and he, he's up. He's here with us. But yep. yesterday we had the privilege of talking to his better half, Miss Valerie Beck. Yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And we asked her the exact same questions we asked yes, him. him today. Mm -hmm. And it was so uncanny the mm -hmm. answers that she gave. Yeah. And the mm -hmm. answers that he gave, they were so in line with yep. each other. Mm -hmm. It was incredible. Yep. You could tell they both collaborated on this book. Mm -hmm. So Mr. Ty Best, we're so happy to have you here. Can you start imparting on our audience on management and leadership? Well, uh, first, again, I want to thank you ladies for inviting me back on the call. And I did everything I could to stay awake to make sure I was awake. Because, you, know? you know, about nine o'clock, I might pass out now. At six, I got some crazy schedule going on. Uh, I might be awake, might not be awake. I don't know. I mean, I just work. I told somebody that I said, look, I sleep when I sleep. I work when I work. If I don't answer the phone, I'm either on the phone or I'm asleep. That's the only reason I don't answer the phone. Okay, even when Val's in the middle, so I said, I got to get this. So, look, um, this is a very important subject. 
especially as we grow, as your organization starts to grow to, to 100, 500,000 people, we can slip into this thing called management mode. And management mode is where we think, you know, we show the, the business to people. We say, all you need to do is get two. Mm-hmm. And we say, well, I got my two. And then we sit back and want to watch that two. And we sit back and watch that two, and that two don't do anything. And, mm-hmm. oh, maybe we got 20. And then we sit back and watch that two. And everybody sort of got a number where they want to get back and they want to chill. They want to pull back on the throttle and just watch it grow. Okay, or they want to coach it. They want to be the inspirator, the motivator, or, 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 you know, no. No, in this business, you never stop recruiting. You never stop doing the life of the business, which is to invite new people into the business. The kiss of death of you, for your organization, your business, really, truly, is to get to that place where you think, I don't have to recruit anybody else anymore. But see, once you really, truly understand the business, you can never get to that place. You know why? Because you don't feel like you're recruiting. You actually feel guilty if you don't tell somebody about what you have once you truly believe. You can't walk past a person and you truly believe that this thing can change their life and not want to share it with them. You can't do it. And so you're not in a recruiting mode. I tell you, even in, even in periods where I won't necessarily aggressive out the opportunity, I'm always out there in the marketplace meeting new friends. So management is, this is man, management is, well, let me just have a frank conversation. All these are things we got to do, but we don't get compensated for doing these things. Excuse me. You want to succeed in the business? You got to be on the power call. You got to get your team on a power call. That's a management thing. Okay. Uh, you got to be on the live presentations as many as you possibly can Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Okay. You got to encourage your team to be on them. That's a management responsibility. That's not recruiting. That's a management thing. Okay. Going to your back office and see who's been ordering units, who's been ordering gold, and knowing how to go and who's ordering gold and where they're coming from. That's a management thing. Coach your team to the next level. That's a management thing. All those are management things, and some of us get to that manager level, and then our group stagnates, we wonder why. Because the best example you can set for your team is to be a leader and always be actively out there recruiting. Mm -hmm. I hope that that sort of uh, explains that in as simple as I possibly can. And so many of us, we get there at a different level. I know people get go to management mode with 10 people in their group. They try to manage the 10 people to 10,000. Okay. And while we're on this subject, oh, thank you very much. And while we're on this subject, let me tell you something right now. Oh, that's that should say that because this is a lot of guests on this call. I should be that strong, but look, folks. Can we chat here, Mister? Feel, feel free. Chat. Feel free. Be well, who you are. When you make your list, we say put everybody on the list: family members, family mother, father, sister, brothers, cousin, friends. Put them all on the list. But don't be surprised when they're not the ones to help you get free. When they're not the ones to help you get to $5,000, $10,000 a month. I, I kind of a blessing. If your family members just get in and buy a package, man, you have no idea how blessed and fortunate you are that they're that supportive. If they get in and do something, you are a rare breed. You are phenomenal. Yeah. Okay, if you got family that actually get in and go run with you, you know, ride or die and build this business like, like you know, Demawi and, and Cynthia Mahone and his, they get together, two sisters said, we're going to do this. Mm-hmm. But when I sit back and I talk to uh, Gloria Bradley and all her sisters who got all involved in care bars, they are fired up as a family doing this thing. Man, that's rare. That's, I'm just telling you that's rare, okay? That don't mean you don't tell them that. You still go tell them. But some people say, well, I sponsor my mama and my grandma, and I'm waiting for them to do something. Your mama and your grandma is not going to lead you to financial independence. You got to keep on recruiting, keep on responding. Even right now with 30,000 in the organization, I passed out cars there. I passed out CDs there. I passed out CDs Friday. Some of you heard me at the bank on Friday passing out CDs yeah. and, and talking to folks. See, I've never, I've never stopped recruiting in 34 years. But I heard of this same very talk I'm sharing with you guys. Do not get in management mode. The top income earners I know in this business, they're still recruiting today, 25 and 30 and 40 years later. I think they made millions of dollars. So that's it. By the way, and if you find yourself, see, we can say we can't say this in care of uh, Maxine, but see, the old days we could say, "Hey, look, if you spent all Thursday night stacking your products, 
<laughs> you your garage and dust them off. That's not building a business. Or you no. can see, you can find a whole lot of work to do in network marketing that has, don't have anything to do with you building your business and making money. You can be, you got products, you can dust them all off, you can rearrange them. So you know what? I don't like these products on the third shelf. Floor. I'm gonna put on the first shelf. Can you brought the first shelf on the second shelf and you finish the next time. Woo, I worked all day today, but you haven't done one thing to expand your business. Mm -hmm. Not income producing, not at all. Not income producing activity. Mm -hmm. And that's why I love that phrase, income. What's an income producing activity? activity. You know the power calls not. I really believe in my heart. I'm not talking to anybody, but if the shoe fits, wear it. I believe there are people who get on the power calls in the morning. They got the TV playing in the background and they got the power call, and they wait for their turn to talk. They go, hey, I won't let my team know I'm plugged in. Click, put it back on mute. And go back and watch the prices right. Mm -hmm. Now that's still right, but you're not fooling anybody but yourself. You're not fooling anybody. You're not fooling me, okay? Because Carabas, everything is done in real time. I mean, a person said, "I, I went back there and bought ten grams of gold." Really? Yeah. Really? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's everything is right. So there's no games here to be played. Everything is so real. Okay. Uh, coming to the Let's Go Weekend. It's a part of building a business, but it's it's but it's not an income producing activity. But that mm -hmm. attitude you develop from coming to Let's Go Weekend will help you do income producing activity. So anyway, any any questions? I could go on for, for days. You know, you know, I got my book here too. <laughs> I got the book right by me at all times. But I got book, book. And Val and I re 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 read them and go, do we write that? <laughs> you know, or sometimes we'll read a book or listen to that says all audio thing. We got to start doing that again. So a lot of times I'm talking to you, but I'm also talking to myself because it's a mm -hmm. it's a constant growing learning experience. And I mean, man, mode is so easy, especially once you get 25, 30,000 for your group. And you you go look, you go to sleep and wake up, and while you sleep, you make a thousand dollars. You go, man, I don't have to do a thing. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you do have to do something if you have a sense. Of responsibility to the people on your team. Yeah. And I just so happen to have grown up in an organization in this industry that put that sense of responsibility in me. It's not just about me. It's always about the new person getting in. It's always about helping that person get in. And when I personally sponsor somebody, I feel a, a personal sense of responsibility in helping them succeed. I have realized a long time ago that I can't make them succeed, but I can help them. Mm -hmm. I feel a responsibility to be there. Uh, to help, to support, and encourage any way I can. You know, Mr. Bess, I want to just tell a quick story. One of the a business owner, he owns a, an insurance company franchise. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me how he noticed over this last year, because, you know, they all kind of have like a district manager that kind of pops in, reviews how the franchise is doing, but goes on about their business. Well, the company changed last year to where now, it's every three months and they're saying, giving them quotas, telling them they have to reach these, this level of sales. And he goes, now, last time I checked 12 years ago, I bought this franchise, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. I'm an independent franchise owner. He says, yes, I abide by the rules, but now I got a, somebody coming in telling me what to do. So he announced two months ago to our networking group, he's selling his franchise. He says, oh, no, I am a business owner. I do not want to be managed. I want to manage my own business. So that brought home to what you were saying and, and what uh, Val Best was saying yesterday. She said, people do not want to be managed. Right. She goes, do you want somebody calling you every day, Sheila, managing you? Mm -hmm. and and the answer is no. Or, work, or working on you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've been working on getting so and so started. Mm -hmm. Let me call yeah. and inspire them for the day. Yeah. You know, let me work with them. For, no. Yeah. So people okay. don't also don't don't want to feel that you're motivating them. You know, they oh, want you're not motivating them. You know, the little catchphrases and things like that. We discussed that. She said, but you know, you know, you're saying, well, what are you saying? That I'm not motivated? That I need to call you and motivate you or inspire you. People don't want, they really don't want to hear that. They don't. You get into this industry, in my opinion, who get in it, really get in. I mean, there are people who get in because their friend asks them to. But I mean, mm -hmm. those who get in and catch the vision 
they catch the vision of freedom. They don't want to be told what to do. Right. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I've had companies offer me money to come, you know, work with that company. I go, nah, pass. It's why, because the minute you put me on payroll, I work for you. I work for you. I, and you may call me and want me to go someplace I don't want to go. It's it goes your freedom. The <laughs> it goes your freedom. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> I had that happen one time about 20 years ago. Okay. I had a company that um, I came on and sort of vice president of the company. But I was really more, I was a vice president of marketing. I was really more still an independent rep. And they called me one day and wanted me to go to Iowa in the middle of January. And I realized, I said, oh, I'm in a unique situation here because I am sort of accepting a little pay for I, mm, ooh. I went on the Iowa and I said, I got to get out of this situation. I don't like this. Okay, at all. That was me. I don't like, you know, I didn't, you know, look, the only reason I survived for eight years in corporate America was because I was out in the field. There was no one telling me what time to be there, what time to leave, what I had to do, what my response. I, I didn't understand what a responsibility was at 22 years old. And then we're off topic a little bit, but it tells you this management thing is serious. And so we want to be managed. They want to be the boss. Like most people think if they own the business, Miss Abram, you know, they think if I'm the owner, I get to come and go what I want to. No, you own the business. The business owns you. You're like a slave to the business. I mean, you don't even, know, you don't even have a clue what you're talking about. If I own the business, I'm the boss. I get to come and go. You see the boss come and go, but you don't know where he's going. He, he ain't going home to go to sleep and watch soap operas. He going to the bank. Well, she going to the bank. Okay. okay. Or she going to talk to the other client. You have no, just because she's not in your place of work, that doesn't mean she or he is not built working a business. They're working all the time. And then when you go home at five o'clock and chill out and go lift weights and go job, the owner's at home doing this. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Let me do some of this paperwork I got to get done. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yesterday, the payroll. Yeah. Oh, my God. Don't even talk about payroll and all that kind of stuff. Management mm -hmm. is a trip. I tell you what I said. I was CEO of the company for years. I was CEO from 8 to 5 in the morning. And I was the morning steward from 5 to 12. I like to kill myself. Mm -hmm. Okay. But this management thing is serious. So for those who are listening, mm -hmm. ask yourself, which mode am I am? And ask yourself, is this a management activity or is yeah. this a... Or, I don't want to say income reduce activity. Is this a business building activity? Because sometimes you will do things that are not income producing activities, but they are business building activity. I might spend 45 minutes on the phone, let's say with Maxine Jones. Excuse me. That may not be an income producing activity, but it is a business building activity. Why? Because I'm trying to help her get a great understanding of the business, maybe a greater vision of what we're doing. So that's a business building activity. It may not be an income producing activity at that moment because she's already in. Okay, and there's no quota here. So she get whatever goals she want to get, what you know, that kind of thing. So you, you gotta know? pay attention to that. But this mm -hmm. management mode thing, people get stuck on it. And there's some people in management mode, like I said, at five thousand, ten thousand, twenty thousand. Everybody got a number, and you have the right to do that. If you get to ten thousand dollars a month in income and you don't feel like working the business anymore, you got the right to go into a full management or just disappear. But don't be surprised if your team disappears too. Don't be surprised if all of a sudden your, your income go from 10 grand to nine to eight. Here's the beauty. It won't go overnight. I mean, if you've been somewhat of the leader, it won't just go overnight, but it'll start to erode. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because the group is a statement. The speed of the team is based on the speed of the leader. The speed of the leader determines the speed of the team. Mm -hmm. if the leader's chilling. Every time we look, the leader's chilling. Every time the leader's at the beach, the leader's partying. Well, then the group tend to take that, take that, take their cue from the leader. Yeah. If your commitment level is a 10, most of the leaders, most of the people in your team, their commitment level is a nine or eight or seven or six or five, whatever yours is. So most people are not going to do what you say. They're going to do what you do. Okay. Okay. I mean, that's the, that's the real reality of what we have our hands on. Most of do what we do, not what we say. Okay. And they got to get a sense that you're, that you're working just like they're working. Okay. And by the way, you can't fake them out. Not in this business. I mean, you can try for it and get away with it for a while, but eventually they, they, they're going to call you out on it. Another reason, let me say this. Another reason why you also want to always be out there sponsoring people. See, I can't ask you to do something I'm not doing. Mm -hmm. See, if I'm not doing it and then you come back and you say, this is hard. This is hard. I can't find nobody to want to do it. Well, if I haven't sponsored anybody in eight months, I don't know if that's true or not. Mm -hmm. 
But if I consider you, uh, look, I just sponsored three people last week. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, but if I haven't been trying to sponsor anybody, if I haven't been passing out CDs or passing out cars and talking mm -hmm. to folks, and you come to me and say, man, this is tough. This is too tough. I can't find anybody who want to do it. Go back and go, me, really? It's really tough out there? Wow. Okay. Uh-uh. But if I can sit there and say, look, I just sponsor me. Look, I don't sponsor. Look, I've sponsored over 200 people. I sponsor right now, I don't know, maybe some weeks three people, some weeks none. But I sell on average three to four people maybe a month, maybe five. I don't sponsor. I, don't, I spend 80% of my time. Now, let me, let me share this with you real quick. Your role is going to change. When you first get started, I would say 80% of your time, maybe even 90% of your time, is spent recruiting. But after you've been in three, four months, if you're really not after it, that role will shift more into management. So all of a sudden it goes from being 89% recruiting and 10% management to all of a sudden it's 20% management, you know, 80% recruiting, and all of a sudden it's 40% management, 50% recruiting. So you got to get that balance there because as your team grows, you got to manage what's important. Mm -hmm. It's important sometimes to spend 35 minutes with somebody on the team like Ms. Abram or Ms. Maxine Jones versus going out and getting a brand new person who don't know what they're doing. It's leveraging time at this point. You said, well, wait a minute. I can make sure that Miss Jones have a great understanding of what she's doing, and she can build her team and go out and put a 10,000 people on her team versus me going out and make sure I get this one brand new person that's going to take me the next three to six months to develop. See, so those are all, all kind of, I don't know if I'm making a whole lot of sense, but what I'm really trying to say, never stop recruiting. Yeah. Can you, can you talk about now leadership? What is a leader? What's leadership in this business? Well, they're leaders and they're bosses. Mm -hmm. In networking, there are no bosses. Because you don't hire anybody. You can't tell anybody what to do. I mean, you can, but they won't stay around long. You can direct. You can encourage. You can point them in the right direction. Leadership is the ability to get people to voluntarily, yes. Okay. To get people to voluntarily support this vision and goal you have for your company or your organization. Mm -hmm. That's why the greatest leaders in many places, in many, in many times, happen to be um, the greatest leaders many times happen to be what? Pastors. Mm -hmm. um, people who run volunteer organizations. Okay, because all your staff and all people support you, they come voluntarily. You can't tell them what to do. I used to say all the time, building a network marketing is the closest thing like, to like, like building a church. Why? Because everybody wants to volunteer their time and energy in pursuit of this vision and this goal. You can't boss anybody around. Okay? And if you want to be a better leader, I would encourage you, get John Maxwell's book, 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership. That's a must-read book if you don't want to lead. Because when you're leading, okay, people got to want to follow, want to support, want to help. And I, I hate to even use the word follow because, see, that's nothing. People don't just want to follow anybody, you know, because we got this thing, especially in, in the hood, you know, where nobody wants to follow anybody. You read uh, Barack Obama's book, um, Gifts from Thy Father, and it's not a political statement for those who, whatever your political agenda is, that's your business, mm -hmm. okay? But uh, I love this book. Because his grandmother said to him one time, he says, the problem with rock with, with Africa is that everyone wants to be king of the village. Without any knowledge, any background, any know-how, just something about me and we want to be the king. Even if we don't know anything, we want to be in charge. Okay? And we got evidence of that all around us today without getting political. People who want to be in charge don't know what they're doing. Okay? And so... To be, I believe to be an effective leader, first you must be committed to serve. They said the greatest leader will be the greatest server. The greatest leader will be the greatest server. But if you're going to lead in anything, then you must learn something about what you're doing. I mean, you, learn. you can't come in day one and say, I'm leading. Okay, well, wait a minute. You just got in last week. Well, you can act like a leader, but you better submit yourself to some leadership somewhere, start reading some books, listen to the leadership, plug it in so you can get some information so you can know what you're doing so you can lead people in the proper direction, okay? And the leader is stable. You can't be a leader and be hot today, cold tomorrow, hot today, cold tomorrow, hot today, cold tomorrow. 
You can't be a leader being in this thing today. God told me to do it on Monday. And on Tuesday, God told you not to do it. You can't be a flaky, inconsistent person and call yourself a leader. Leadership is like that stable person. I mean, you may have to go up here, come down here, go up here, come. But you're not like this. Okay, you, that's, no. So lessons in leadership is about stabilizing your personality, stabilizing your energy, being consistent. And when people call you, they know every time you get a phone, they got the same person. Mm-hmm. They got the same person, not somebody different, like calling Jekyll and Hyde. They don't know what they're going to get when they call you. You can't lead that way. They got to feel like, you know, hey, look, I am who I am right now. I, ain't, I haven't shaved since the last Let's Go weekend. Now, I'm going to shave by the time we get to Let's Go weekend six. I will. I might not shave the beard. Though. I'm getting used to it. I might trim it up a little bit, mm-hmm. trim my hair up a little bit, take off the cap, put on a shirt and tie. Be consistent, whoever you are, be consistent. So anyway. You know, one 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 phenomenal statement that both you and Valerie Best made, which you don't think this way, but it was so true. You said to be a leader, you must be a servant. Mm-hmm. You must be a servant to your team to be a good leader. And you that's something that people don't think about. Leadership is servitude. We're serving. Yeah. But you have to be the best. You have to be able to say, how can I help? Mm-hmm. Not telling them what to do, but how can I help and be there to help? That was a phenomenal point that we got. And actually, that point is in Chapter 9 as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was a really big Say point. Else. And it's the best. Maybe, you, maybe think of too. you must have a, mm-hmm. you must be able to think long term. Uh, you think about your team and you think about what's in the best interest of that person long term. Not what's in your best interest. Mm-hmm. And this is where a lot of folks, see, a lot of folks come into business with selfish concerns. And I always think about the short term gain, the short term gain. Well, you can't really be an effective leader. Is everything you use about short term profit and short term gain. You got to look down the road when you're dealing with your team or dealing with individuals on your team and say, what's in the best interest of Miss Maxine Jones? Sometimes you look at the program and say, uh, it's in my best interest if they do this right now. I give you, I give you a better example. I sponsor a person in the business, right? Uh, now they're ready to buy a VIP pack. And I'm gonna get excited because I'm a VIP. I'm gonna make $400. Uh, but what's in their best interest might be to sponsor their wife or to sponsor their husband. And buy the VIP pack in their husband's name, and they're, they're going to get the twenty percent direct commission instead of me. Mm-hmm. Okay, if they're VIP. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I got to make that decision. Mm-hmm. Do I tell them that right up front? Cost myself four hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Well, see, now short term person say, man, I got to get that four hundred dollars. A long term person say, I want to build a long term relationship with Ms. Maxine Jones. I'm gonna tell her what's in the best interest for her and her family. Mm-hmm. Okay, I want to be in a relationship with her for five years now, 10 years now. I'm not going to tell them it's in the best interest for me right now. I'm going to say that you do there's another way you can go too. You can sponsor your spouse, get you a VIP, get them a VIP. Okay, and when they get the VIP, you got a 20% direct commission. I mean, if you're in a position to do so, or you can buy yourself a silver, then sponsor your spouse with a VIP, make $200 off. I mean, you can break it down the way you want to, but you get the idea. Okay, you got to make that decision. Okay, or you got to help them sometime make that decision. And many people say, I'm going for the short-term decision. I, I got to get that money now. Okay. Well, they might have got the money now, but they maybe lost a long-term business partner. I have people sometimes call my other company, and they'll say stuff to me like, well, you know, I, I ordered a, a 40s, these, only got three. I said, okay, I put no one in the mail. And they go, is that it? I go, yeah. They go, that's it? I go, yeah. They said, you don't want me to send your receipt or cop? I said, no. They said, why? I said, if you want the product banner to lie about it, I'm going to send it to you. Okay? I, you know, now, I may not say it quite that way, but I'm going to say something effective. Because I have people who have been on auto ship for 15, 20 years. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to argue with them about a $20, bo- 20, you know, a $20 item. And they, if they say they, they say they ordered four and they only got three, man, put the other thing in the mail. Okay? Okay, Tom Peters said, always exceed expectations. That's one of the things Mr. Harold Seitz 
is a genius set. He said, he said, um, exceed expectations, under promise and over deliver. That's the Tom Peters phrase. Under promise and over deliver. You tell somebody it's gonna take six weeks to deliver their, their product, whatever it is, and they get it in four. They so ecstatic they don't do it themselves. Okay. But if you tell them it's gonna take three and it took four, they're upset because they were looking for their third week. Okay. So part of leadership always manage these expectations of people in the team. It's the same thing. I don't like to promise you're going to get in business. I don't like to oversell the business. A, a, a responsible leader does not have to get on the hype the business, over promise yourself. You're going to be a million in the next two weeks. Well, now, what are you going to say when two weeks go by and they haven't made any money? Mm -hmm. Okay? What are you going to say if six months go by and they're still struggling? And you promise them how they're going to make a zillion dollars in 90 days. No, said, look, let me tell you, you could. Uh, you could. I don't know your sphere of influence. You could. But I'd rather get you set to start thinking about, hey, look, give yourself time to succeed. You could become a me in the next six months or 12 months or 24 months. I'm going to tell you what happened to me. It took me 12 years to get free. Now, I'm not saying this is going to happen to you, but I'd rather have them start to get, get some parameters in their brain that maybe um, uh, help prepare them so if they should do what Mr. Mike Delco did at 103 days, they lead a job, they done great, fantastic. But they look up six months later, they're saying, I'm scratching my head because everybody's situation is different. And as a leader, we must take into account those kind of situations. Who am I talking to? And I'm not saying we, I can't, see, I don't know enough about Ms. Maxine Jones to tell her when she's going to be free, when she's going to be at 10 grand a month. I don't know a spirit of influence. We have people coming to this business sometimes, folks. So you got to get me cranked up and started. <laughs> And what is, what, what is freedom to me? Well, it may not be the, the $10,000. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's everybody got a different agenda. That, that, thank you. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. So you, first you find out what they want as a leader, and then you find out how you can help them get it, but you don't know. And so, and by the way, we do so much business over the internet now with social media, we don't know anything about anybody. Yes. Okay, except what we see on social media, what we talk to them about, we don't know. Okay, person could have just got out of you know, a high institution, and it was a high institution of learning, okay? Now, we don't know that about them, okay? And it's really not, that's why I love about network, and it's not my business, though, so you don't have to volunteer the information, but now to sit here and say, that person who just got up, just 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 finished up doing five to seven, okay, with some nonsense, is going to have the same success as that guy who just got out of school with his MBA and got this tremendous credibility and been in corporate America for eight, nine years. Okay, that's he's on. He's playing a different game. Got a bigger sphere of influence. That person could do stuff in six months. It may take the other person two, three years to do it because they got to build up credibility. Mm -hmm. Or to say some nineteen year old is going to do the same thing somebody else forty years old have done. That's just not even fair to the nineteen year old. Now they could because they could see. Let me say this. I said this to a guy today this afternoon, and I've said this to Mr. Delco. I said everybody should be a network marketer. If they only understood one thing, network marketing is like the human lotto. It's like the human lottery. Okay, you can accidentally become a multi-million in this thing, but you got to play to win. You got to get in. I mean, the truth of mine is, yes, you can learn to build it and build it. I've had to build it like four different times, you, but even without learning how to build it. If you don't learn any of this stuff, if you get you a stack of cards, stack of CDs, and just play the game and just be out there all the time. Passing out cards, passing out CDs. You may trip across somebody and they get it. And boom, their leg's gone. You just keep doing that. What if it took you five years just out there, you're getting rejected, you're, I don't know who's them. Then all of a sudden, two legs gone, and you find yourself at $100,000, $200,000 a year, you go, that was easy. Because see, the five years going to go by anyway. Okay? Back in the early days, we said, it's a two to five year plan to freedom. People said, Five old years, well, in five years, I'll be 45 years old. We said, well, how old you will be if you don't do it? What? Still how old you be if you don't do it? <laughs> you know, you're still going to be 45. But, man, get in this thing. And, and look, if you want to become a professional, get in the game and play. You may trip across, you know, a Sheila Ava, Maxine Jones, a Rodney Berger, or somebody. You may, you may trip across me. Okay? I mean, I guarantee you. Dr. Stagwell made one phone call to one guy. The guy made one phone call to me. Okay? 
Does that make Dr. Steiger a marketing guru because he found one guy who knew me? No, but at least he was in the game. If he was in the game, he could he wouldn't have the opportunity he had today. It's the same thing. I've been in the game for 34 years. So what happens? I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there doing what I do. Guy picked up the phone and called me and said, man, I want in. I want to run with you. I said, fantastic. Then he picks up the phone and called Mike Delco. Okay. Mike Delco said, I want, I'm in too. And now Mike Delco is like a living legend. That make me a that doesn't make me a, a network marketing guru. I mean, let's get real. Okay. But I mean, I know some things. I've experienced some things. But I'm not paying myself on the back like, man, let me tell you, I was networking, you know, and I found Mr. Deco, and man, look, man, I talk, man, please. All that stuff. No, get in the game. Yes, Ms. Maxine, let me be quiet. Mr. Best, one of the things that you shared, uh, you said as far as being a leader, that you must be willing to be inconvenienced. And I listened to you on the power call, and I listened to you when we, you know, we had uh, talked with the three of us, how you're talking to people at all hours of the day and night, or people are calling you and you are just willing to talk with them. I, I call you and you're always willing to talk to me. So that's one of the things I just want you to just elaborate on a little bit about being inconvenienced. Well, one of the top, one of the top no, not one of the top income earner in this, in, as a distributor in this industry said, success is inconvenient. You build your success upon your inconvenience, but the convenience of others. Let me tell you something. Your phone rings. That person may have that final prospect on the call to do a three-year with that they've been trying to get on for two weeks. But you're in the middle of watching a television program. Or you're in the middle of eating dinner. Or you're you in the bathroom. I don't care what it is. You're in the shower. Okay? It's inconvenient for you to say, oh, your head hurt. Or your back hurt. Or better yet, you sleeping. Okay? You, something. It's always inconvenience. And you got to you gotta put that aside and say, let me grab this call. Even when you don't feel it, let me grab It's inconvenient for you, but it's convenient for them. This may be the only time they have to make that three-year call. Okay? Because, by the way, they're not as committed as you are, so they are building minutes in their convenience. They're building when they feel like it. Okay? But now when the dust settles, you be the person making $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year in the business, and they making ten dollars or $20,000 a year. And they wonder why. Because you went out your way inconvenient. Man, let me tell you something. It's inconvenient to go to Let's Go Weekend. Okay, look, I will be at Let's Go Weekend. Now, let me tell you something. I'm excited about seeing everybody at Let's Go Weekend. Am I excited about being on an airplane? No. Am I excited about staying in a hotel? No. Am I excited about eating hotel food? No. I'm excited about seeing everybody. I'm excited about being there. Am I excited about speaking on stage? No. You got a lot of folks there that can do that stuff, man. I don't have to say anything between Mr. Delco, Roger Williams, Maxine Jones, Sheila Abram, the Browns, uh, 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 the, the Dr. Patrice Gore. I could go the whole weekend and not say anything. And it'd be a great weekend. So why am I going? And it's inconvenient because I right now, I just don't particularly care for travel anymore. But you know what? I'm going to be there. Okay. It's inconvenient, but I'm going to be there. Why? Because I want other people I want to be there, and I can't get them to be there if I'm not going to be there. Okay? I can't sit and say that you go. Like, Bachelors, you go. Tell me what happened. No. Uh-uh. I got to go set the example all the time. I got to be there. You know? But it's inconvenient. It's inconvenient. It's everything. Look, man, my mother raised eight kids. Everything about that was inconvenient. <laughs> Can you imagine having eight kids? You're 26, 27 years old. You got eight miles of feed. Inconvenience is a way of life. Okay. But some of us to have matured to that point, uh, you know, Maxine and Miss Maxine Jones and Miss Shirley Abram would even understand that everything about success is inconvenient. Man, it's inconvenient to go to college. The short term thing would have been to go get some kind of job, make some short term money. Man, can you imagine going through college for four years trying to live on five, ten dollars a week? Mm. Okay, you splurge when you when you got when you get the McDonald's, got a Big Mac and some French fries and a Coke. Man, me and Val would split that thing up, thought we died and gone to heaven. <laughs> you know, maybe you don't know this stuff, man. You know, or you run, you look, you run out of money, you run out of oil, you got a popcorn popper, and you got all you got is popcorn. Okay, and we go, what we cook? We find some Vaseline, throw Vaseline in the popcorn popper, cook the popcorn, oh, and oh it's 12 o'clock at night. 
Okay, that was inconvenient too. I mean, I can, I can take some inconvenient things. Uh, wait, do what you got to do. You know, need some oil, right? Need some oil in the popcorn popper. Didn't have any. Everything closed. Didn't have any money. Didn't have any transportation. I think it was a stop with the junior in college. We said, well, let's try this Vaseline now. It'll work. Put that Vaseline in the popcorn pop. Put the popcorn in there. Popcorn pop. Ate it. Say, hey, Sal, it worked well. You know? <laughs> You want to talk about inconvenience, okay? <laughs> Ever go to a function? Listen, Tyron, it's easy for you to say, no, tell me about ease. Nothing's been easy about even building this business. We go to a function and every hotel book, we have to sleep in the car. Yeah. Okay? I mean, don't tell me about how tough it is. I'm not the guy. People say, well, if I can just go full time, I can build this business. Tell, crowd somebody else's shoulder about that nonsense. I did a business part time for 12 years. Flying all over the country. It's it part-time for 12 years. You going to tell me you can't do the business part-time? No, uh-uh, I did it part-time for 12. Wait a minute, and got to eight, nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 a month doing it part-time. But I didn't have any time for any, everything about it was inconvenient. I didn't have time for Little League baseball, Little League football. I didn't have time to go see the Lakers play. None of that nonsense. That's not nonsense. Serious business for some people. It's definitely mm-hmm. serious business for the guys being, get, being paid a million dollars a year to play. But it's not serious business for the fans, Okay. Right. I'm telling you, I can remember that one well, little story, sad about story. Let's talk about inconvenience to build a business. I had booked a meeting. I'm living in Los Angeles. And Miss Ava can appreciate this because she know it's like living in Pittsburgh. You know, Pittsburgh still fans of Pittsburgh still. I'm living in Los Angeles. <coughs> 1989. It was 89. Lakers playing Detroit. NBA Finals. Now, you understand, the guy I played in college with is playing for the Detroit Pistons. It's like the fifth game, okay? And one of my vendors got literally courtside tickets to the game. The Tyrone, we got tickets to the game. Here are tickets to the game. We know you're a basketball fan. I said, I'm not a fan. I'm a basketball fanatic. Mm-hmm. I said, but I can't go tonight. Why? I booked a meeting. I said, I got, an- I got another appointment. What you got to do that's more important? Now, I didn't tell him what I was doing. I said, what you got is more important than the game. I said, I told somebody I was going to be somewhere and I got to be there. Okay. And I, you know, I said, so I really, don't your friend play for Detroit? Yes, he does. We got you court side ticket, blah, 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 blah. And they were Detroit won that night and won the NBA championship, the whole thing. Okay. I went and did my meeting and nobody showed up. I never forget that was yesterday. I said, I missed the NBA Finals. I had tickets to the game, courtside, and I go do a meeting when nobody showed up. Hmm. It means part of the process. That's the way it is. Okay? But success is inconvenient all the way around. And that's the reason why so many people don't succeed. In, in, in th- in it. See, not just networking, anything they want to do. I mean, it's inconvenient to go out to school and get your degree. That's inconvenient. It's inconvenient to go to school with your master's degree. Inconvenient. Okay. It's inconvenient to work overtime sometimes. But we'll do that because, you know, we want that Instagramification money. So don't get me started on my tangents, guys. He, you know, <laughs> no, you know. So to wrap it up, Mr. Best, to, to wrap it up, one of the things that we definitely um, took from this, I know I did, is you do not want to switch into management mode. You want to always stay in recruit mode, building your team. Management mm-hmm. activities are going to come along mm-hmm. with that process. Mm-hmm. But we don't want to flip into, I'm managing. And then that's when you, they start saying, my team. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. I got to talk to my that, team. We hear that on the power call, which you addressed, yeah. that is the team. And, and it, well, it's or still our team. Yeah. It's so our team. That's one of the things that you always want to be building the team and supporting that, supporting everyone, but really supporting that brand new person so mm-hmm. that they are on the right track when they come on board. Yeah. So, so that's one of the things I truly, truly got out of this. And, and Miss, Miss Maxine Jones, what about you? I got out of it the fact that uh, as, as far as a leader, you know, we always call you the, the visionary, the mentor. But it is about vision. It's about the, the looking down long term as far as building that team. 
and also ensuring that you know the people that you are surrounded with they they're on the same page as you they have the same type of energy i mean a leader your energy alone inspires us and you know and you talk about that someone gets on on the the call and saying you know you know uh, i'm just i'm here today and you know I, i'm do i'm trying to make it you know, that no one's going to follow me. no one's going to follow that type of energy so it, it's about being cohesive and being the example setting the standard of what you want on your team setting the standard of mm-hmm. of the people that you do want to come along and 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 gird arms with and keep moving forward i don't want to manage anybody but i want leaders to come out of my team mm-hmm. that's what i want yeah. you just you know something that i'm gonna touch on that that really has anything to do with what we're saying tonight or not but i'm gonna I'm going to say this, and, and this is not to get people so paranoid, but it says language, words have power. Okay? Some words you want to learn to avoid, to just sort of take out your vocabulary. It's tough now. I'm still doing it. I'm not saying I got down on the pack. It'll slip out on me, too. Words like my team. My team. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, um, um, you want to start using words like the team, our team. A mm-hmm. uh, uh, word you don't want to use under me. I got I got thirty thousand people under me. Nobody wants me under anybody. Mm-hmm. I mean, just yeah. so you always got to put yourself in the uh, take yourself out of your world and get in their world and go. Do you want to be described as I'm under Bob? No, that's not what you know. So you know, I was talking to a team member, a business associate. Listen to Mr. Delco's words. Listen to my words. You hear her say things like I was talking to a business associate. I am talking to a guy yesterday. He says. I thought Mr. Delco was in my upline. I talked to me all the time and said, I thought you, I thought Mr. Delco sponsored you. I said, you know, that's great. I want those lines blurred, blurred. I want them blurred. I want people to feel free to call me, Mr. Delco. Somebody I was talking to this, uh, I think Miss Avery, you was talking about somebody you talked to what yesterday for an hour and they weren't on your team. You just you just try, you're doing the best you can to help them. See, that's the environment we want to create. Right. We want to create that environment. When people see, man, they, you know. They just over there try to do everything they can to help everybody to see by any means necessary. That's what they're doing. Watch your words. When people get on the when you get on the power call, watch your words. I, it just every day somebody, but at least once a week, somebody get on the power call said, I didn't hear the first half of the power call. Because I oh, we don't need to know that. Don't say it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we don't need to know you missed the first half of the power call. Why you gotta share that information? Oh, here's one. <laughs> Uh, uh, I haven't made a sponsor about it in the last two weeks, but I'm hanging in there. Thank you for the encouragement. Appreciate that. We don't need to know that. Okay. You know, uh, I've been talking to all these folks and nobody wants to get in, but I'm hanging in there till death do us. But we don't need to know that. Say that. Remember this negative, negative upline. Okay. Negative, positive stuff downline or positive stuff. To the whole field. When you're on a power call, anything out your mouth. Oh, here's one. I heard today, I just I just like this. I said, what do I have to say to people again? If you're not saying something that empowers people, I know it's the truth. I'm just keeping it real. Keep it real to yourself. <laughs> okay, here's a, here's a real statement today. Now, I know the person might be listening, so I apologize, but I'm not going to call your name. Person day came on the call and said, I just got the gold I ordered in September. And I was like this. Mm. Oh, Lord, God help me. I said, what do I got to say? Okay. Ooh. Now, see, now watch this. What's wrong with that statement? It's a truthful statement. And see, it didn't have any impact on you because that's probably not your, that's probably not your first order. So like it wouldn't phase me if 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 Karen Boss took six months to send me my gold, wouldn't phase me because I've been getting gold from Karen Boss for four years. Mm-hmm. But what about the guest that's on the call for the first time? They think about getting a the package, they're going, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, now wait a minute. It just took them six months or five months mm-hmm. to get it. And all see, people are always looking for reasons not to do something instead of reasons to do something. Mm-hmm. And so you got to guard every single thing. You got to be conscious and ask yourself, does this need to be said? 
okay? Does this need to be said on the power call? Say it to me. Say it, say it in private. Call me my phone. You got my phone number. You got Miss Jones' phone number. You got Miss Abel's phone number. You got Mr. Douglas' phone number. You ain't got to sit on a call with three, four, five hundred people, of which 50 or 60 may be guests for the first time, and they missed that the whole cause wiped out because all they heard was somebody waited three months for some gold. They don't understand how gold is manufactured, how it's processed, that we got the best gold money can buy is all. I mean, they don't understand that process at all. They think about getting in. Yeah. And then you're going to talk about it took you three, four months to get some gold. Okay, you didn't tell them that what you ordered. You didn't tell them it was a custom this or that. Nothing. Okay. But you're so happy you got it. Yeah, but you also told me this took you six months. See, so all these little things, okay, that we got to think about what we're saying. Now, by the way, what scares me is you say this on a public call. What could you possibly say in one-on-one -on -one wow. in private Ooh, with somebody yeah. else? You say, I can't sponsor anybody. We go, yeah. Well, well, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> Ooh, I can't imagine what you might be saying if I'm not around, okay? See, so anyway, mm -hmm. I hope I hope that says something to people. Yeah. You know, take certain things out of your vocabulary. And sometimes we as you know leaders, we'll say things like, I'm gonna be transparent. And we tell something to everybody, whether it's a webinar platform, the power call, that we didn't need to be that transparent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> The story, what like Ty, Ty, you always say, you tell your story when it's got a good ending. Yeah, and yeah. Tell your story yeah. has a good ending. Tell somebody yeah. else's yeah. story. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. Where right, 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 right. right, right, right. did right, right, right. 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 they supposed to know their story? Who's supposed to know his story? Yeah. Don't tell your Tell your sad story while you sit in the swamp. Get out of the swamp. <laughs> Nobody knows. <laughs> no, yeah. Nobody <laughs> knows my sorrow. Okay. Okay. That's great to say sorrow. I was here, but now I'm here. That's a great story. But I was here and I'm still here. That's not a great story. Okay. Not a good end. It's not inspiring anyway. But thank you so much. We all got to see. We all got a story to tell. Yes. But what makes the story great? What makes the story worth telling is this. I heard this a long time ago. There's a dream. There's a struggle. Then there's a victory. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Dream, yeah. struggle, victory. Yeah. Write that down, folks. Dream, struggle, yeah. victory. Okay. You got a dream. If you're in a struggle phase, keep the struggle to yourself. Most people are glad you got the struggle. They they glad you got struggles. They got struggles. But when you get the victory, then you can tell the story. About yeah. your struggle, about your dream, because with every dream, there will follow a struggle. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And if you continue to struggle, you will have the victory. Mm -hmm. And then you tell that story. Oh, my gracious. Yeah. That's so vital. That is. To understand. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, my heart goes out to folks. I mean, the, the, you know, I mean, power call is not a therapy session. Okay. And some of you, if you can't get your energy up when you're on the power call, just don't say anything. You're not obligated to say anything on the power call. It's not if you come on the power call and say, I just want to let my team know I'm here and dying. So I thought I'd just say hello. No, man, if you, ain't, you can't bring the energy there to help somebody, inspire. You know, I know you've heard this thing before. Sometimes you need the meeting. Sometimes the meeting needs you. Sometimes you need to call. Sometimes the call needs you. It's not about you. It's not about self. It's about what can I do? What am I saying to other people, other people listening to me? Okay, regardless, I guarantee you, everybody on the power call got some challenge going on. Mm -hmm. Everybody got some challenge going on. Every, oh. I don't know who you are. I ain't got to ask. I know everybody. You heard the statement, so what? You either uh, leaving a problem, in a problem, or headed towards a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's how you manage those problems. Your response to those problems, attitude-wise, Makes all the difference in the world because nobody's problem free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just relax and go through the thing. Go through the thing like a gladiator, wide mm -hmm. open. You just you just having yourself a ball. Saying, "Man, I got different things going on all the time." Okay. I guess that's why it's called the power call. That's right. <laughs> so, I mean, oh, don't even get me started. Okay. Well, Some of this stuff. And by the way, mm -hmm. let me let me say this. <laughs> 
and say something positive. This is tweaking. Because, folks, I mean, I'm not trying to hype you up. This team, Wealth Builders Worldwide, is the greatest team that I have ever been a part of in my 35, it'll be 35 years in March in this industry. I mean, from the bottom of my heart. So when you would talk about these little things, they, they, it's, it, you're just talking about the tiny stuff. I mean, it's so minute. I'm just trying to help fine tune some stuff because it's nothing. We have not had a single major issue, a single major incident, incident of any kind in, in four plus years. We got some of the greatest, most sensitive, caring people I've ever seen. I'm telling you, so everybody got their books, see? Some of the greatest, most sensitive, caring people I've ever seen in my entire, in my entire career. We got some most loving people uh, reaching out to help people. Uh, I mean, Crossland, don't get a lot of sponsored union. I'm on the phone one day with, with Gloria Bradley and Eddie Hackett, and they're on the phone with Latoya way down in Texas early in the morning. I'm talking to this person, Crossland. Man, all this stuff we wouldn't do 20 years ago. We got a team who said, man, we ain't got time for that nonsense, okay? We building something here, and we're focused. We're focused, okay? Not let anybody knock us off track, okay? We're doing what we got to do. No matter what comes, no matter what goes, no matter which way the wind blows, we're doing what we got to do. That's why I love That's why I love Mr. Harold Seitz, man. I, 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 just, I just, this guy has made me such a believer, and I'm not just over here to find him because I've been around. Mm-hmm. If you've been to the rodeo a few times, and you know, met a few company owners that had dinner and breakfast with a few company owners. You go, this guy's exceptional. He's different. Okay. I got four year track record with him now saying he's different. When there's a problem, he don't sweat it, he just fix it. Mm-hmm. He don't sweat it, he just fix it. Okay. He understood mm, we got to do something to fire this five the team. And this merging of cryptocurrency and care go, go, I would have never saw that coming. I said, what do you got planned next? I said, I don't know, but I'm so confident he got something else planned. I bet the mortgage on it, man. I don't know what. I said, but I'm going to tell you what. Here's the key. Go build your team. Go get your numbers. What did Mr. Delco say on training last night? Go get the numbers. Go get the numbers. Focus on getting the numbers. Work on your people skills and go get the numbers. And you're going to make a lot of money. Don't get caught up in sidetracked and all this little minutiae stuff and the stuff I'm talking about. I don't want you to get so paranoid you're scared to talk on the podcast on the power call because you might say something wrong. Ain't nobody going to call you and rub me. I've never called anybody and tried to rub me. I mean, you have to be really off track for me to pick up the phone and call you and say, uh, you really shouldn't have said that. You have to be so, you have to be so far off track because most of the time, you know, my, I come from the school of finding people, find people doing something right and tell them what they're doing right. What you say? I've got the phone You got one of those calls? Well, yeah, but you have to be but no, 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 Sheila's phone cost. No, uh-uh. let me, no let me I, I, I know what hers was. I was let me say this out. I've <laughs> never, ever, Maxine, Maxine, I've never called Sheila until she was doing something wrong. I've called Sheila and said, Sheila. Suggestion. I right. I said, I've said stuff to you like this, Sheila. Yeah. This is not a boss employee situation. Right. Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> Sheila's used to being the boss. Yes. Okay. And, and, and by the way, and we need that. That's what keeps it on track. So oh, I've yeah. called this to Miss Abram. Mm-hmm. Miss like I mean, I know so nice. you told 15 nice. seconds and he mm-hmm. took 25. Just let it go a little bit. You know, <laughs> sometimes it's the only place people got to let it out. And you got to let them go. Yes. I know we're going in the call at 12 o'clock and it went to 12 15. <laughs> it's okay. It'll be all right. Okay. 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 So she had to loosen the reins a little bit because she was like, uh, 12 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> Don't nobody else get in the queue. What I mean. <laughs> we, we used to say we, that she, we'd have to miss Abram you. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah. But no, and, she doesn't do that anymore. But, uh, hey, 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 really actually, no. but these folks were so bad sometime back then two years ago. They knew they could run over Mike and me. They just run over me and Mike and just <laughs> called me two hours. <laughs> but they wouldn't do that to Miss Abram. They go, okay, she got the call. We're going in the call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, they keep on me. They keep and that's what it, it used to be thirty. That used to be thirty seconds. Right, thirty seconds. Not oh, just, Lord. Yeah. Well, anyway. Well, anyway. <laughs> oh, Lord. We're gonna close this out. This was wonderful, but but to, in my defense, I yes. do have meetings, business meetings too. So that's why right. I'm looking at the time because I already have another meeting set up. After the power call, and I'm like, oh my goodness. And if it's one thing I, I am 
I'm, I'm very punctual. Mm -hmm. I'm very time driven. If I make an appointment with somebody, I am going to make, it has to be something really big for me to miss my time for an appointment. And people can depend on that. Um, Maxine, can you close us out? But before we do, we've mm -hmm. been holding up this book. We want to tell you where to get it from. Wealthbuildersworldwide.info. This is one of this is in our tools for success, but you must be a Carrot Bars affiliate in order to have access to Wealth Builders Worldwide. This is one of the perks that we have in our team. We have literature and recommended reading for your success. And this is not just success in network marketing. When it's you growth. read these books, it's, it's yeah. success in all industries. So it's wealthbuildersworldwide.info. You can order it there. Mr. and Mrs. Best will ship that out to you. And um, you can get it. So it's a must read. It's a must read. Maxine, can you? Well, thank you so much, Mr. Best. Best. Thank, thank, you, thank you, you so much for being our guest this evening. We just enjoy you immensely, really. And we are students yeah. of your word. Yeah. So just to let you know Follow that. you into battle anywhere. Anywhere. <laughs> yes. yes. No, and I want to just thank the, the uh, Facebook family and friends for being a part of Can We Chat here. And our topic for next week is going to be how to capitalize on the launch. So be with us then. It's been our pleasure to have you in the chat room. And you know, we'll have Mr. Best back again. So be on the lookout for him. Sometimes it'll be a surprise. <laughs> so thank you so much for being here this evening. <laughs> and good night to everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. And good night, Valerie Best. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you for loaning us, Mr. Tyrone Best. <laughs> good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.